Hello there, Capricorn. Thank you so much for stopping by for your in-depth tarot forecast for the month of August. I am going to break the month down into four different sections. The first time section that we're looking at is going to be August the 1st through the 8th. And we are going to be looking at this in a much more in-depth way than how I used to do the weeklies. Um, feel free to zoom past <laughs> where I'm shuffling and putting down cards if you want to. I know that that is a time-consuming part of the video. But I also know that there are a lot of people out there who like to witness that. So I'm doing that while I'm on camera. Even though you can't see the cards, I'm sure you guys can tell what I'm doing. You have a pretty good idea. Alrighty. Maybe one of these days I'll get tech savvy and get two cameras. I don't know. Okay, your cards are down, Capricorn. This is for the 1st through the 8th of August. We're going to start off first with your environment. And your environment is any place where you have energy or effort invested. For most people, it's usually home, but it could be someplace else. So you just want to kind of keep an open mind about where your environment could be. Okay, so when I'm looking at your environment, It looks like there's something that you have kind of kept restricted or kept limited about your environment from other people. You're letting down those limits or those restrictions right now. In fact, you are calling people in <laughs> to look at or to be a part of or to enhance that part that you didn't really let people take a look at before. And it looks like you're creating something really wonderful there. So this could be something like if you had a part of your environment that you considered maybe ugly, um, now you're having people come in and give you estimates about, okay, well, how can we make that, how can we beautify that? You know, this could be landscaping, this could be redoing a bathroom or whatever. Um, but it definitely looks like you're creating something new and wonderful in that environment by um, allowing people in, by allowing other people in. Okay. Let's look next at your subconscious leanings for the time frame of the 1st through the 8th. Now, sometimes I'll say you have, or I'll say now. Uh, please be aware, no matter what tense I'm using whenever I'm talking about uh, what I'm seeing here, we're always talking about whatever the time frame is up in the corner there, um, unless I say that there's a delay here and then if there's some kind of delay that may end up happening outside the time frame more in the future from that time frame but otherwise we're talking about the time frame listed right there okay la da 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 let's look at subconscious leanings you have some kind of situation in your life right now capricorns where you're sort of holding back you're taking kind of a wait and see attitude. And as you are taking that wait and see attitude, you're doing a lot of seeing. You're doing a lot of detective work, digging, looking for information. And I think that you're looking for information on this wait and see situation because you think that you may have found something that is actually your ideal target or your ideal goal. Um, this could be anything from a home, to a car, uh, to a mate, to um, the perfect couch, the perfect laptop, <laughs> you know, but you found something that you think is ideal. You're not ready yet to pull the trigger on it because you do want to do some more digging for information and make sure before you actually commit to whatever this is though. Okay, and that's what's in your subconscious. Subconscious. All right, next thing that we have coming up for you, Capricorns, talks to me about two different things. First of all, your learning style during this time frame, and secondly, your communication style during this time frame. So we're going to look at learning first. The first thing that I see is you are very sharp. You're able to pick up on information really quickly. 
and you're able to figure out how to utilize it really quickly. I do see that there's a lot of chaos going on around the information that you're picking up right now, those things that you're researching or that you're finding out about. Um, and so with all of this chaos around the information, to me that just means your information could be changing on a daily basis. Maybe it's even changing on a minute by minute basis. So while you're sharp and you're picking things up and being able to apply them, things are changing. So you're having to think on your feet and make those changes and adjust right along with that information. You're managing to stay grounded through it all. So you've got some kind of common I don't want to say not common, but you've got some kind of target or goal that you're you're keeping your eye on. You're keeping your eye on the target so that the chaos um, doesn't really throw you. It just allows you to make the adjustments you need to make to get to that target. All right, next let's look at communication style Capricorn. What do we have here? It seems to me like you've got some kind of situation that you're communicating on where everybody is kind of rushing to be the first with the news. <laughs> Are you a journalist? Are you a reporter? What's happening here? <laughs> and I think you're right in there rushing to be first with the news. <laughs> Just right in there with everybody else. Um, blah, 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 blah. What else do we have? Truth is showing up as very important to you in your communication style right now. You don't want to say anything that is not true. You're really focused on, you know, and this is probably not just right now. This is probably all the time for you Capricorns. That The truth is, is really close to your heart. That's what you want to pass along. You don't want to deceive anybody or create any kind of illusion. That's just not your game. La -da -da -da. And the other thing I have coming up about your communication style is that, um, you do try to keep things as sunny as you possibly can. You do try to focus on the good. And you try to also help other people stay focused on the good who are in your sphere of influence as well. You like to create that little bubble of goodness. Other people might call you naive, but we know that bubble of goodness just keeps goodness flowing to you. Okay, next thing that I am looking at here, we're looking at work. Um, and so for those of you who don't know me, I see work in two different ways. I see work as that thing that you do to make a living. I'm sorry, there is a mower outside. I don't know if you're picking it up on the microphone, but it just sounds like it's about to die. It's like, hmm, hmm, hmm. <sighs> And it's distracting me. <laughs> There's definitely some rhythm there. <laughs> okay. Let's get back to work. Does that mean that your work is a little shaky? There's a certain rhythm to it. There's a rhythm of busy and a bit rhythm of slow. That's what that would say to me. Because that, normally I'm not distracted that much by sounds around me. That totally made me be quiet and think about it. So I would say with work you do have, there is this rhythm of up and down and up and down and up and down as you go through this time frame, August 1st through the 8th. It may be that you're feeling like things are a little bit shaky there too. Even during the up times, I think you may be feeling like things are a little bit shaky when it comes to work. Um, let's look at what the cards have to say too though. Always nice to have the cards input. There's definitely this up and down sort of rhythm is coming up here. It's showing me that something that you thought was taken care of in the past is coming back up to be um, dealt with. And this is basically some kind of source of tension or debate that's coming back. Um, it looks to me like you're, yeah, you're really not sure what's coming next with work. Kind of like what I was feeling. Like you just, things seem a little shaky even in the up times. And so I think you are making some kind of decision whenever it comes to work just because um, things are seeming a little bit shaky. It's putting you in a position, Capricorns, where you're feeling like, you know what, I have to make a decision before life makes a decision for me here whenever it comes to work. So to me, this feels like this is a decision around how can I make work more secure, um, whether that is talking about the place that you work right now or whether that's talking about finding a place to work that is more secure or creating a place to work that's more secure. I feel like your decision is just about how can I make work feel more secure for me. 
All right, next thing we're going to look at is inner work, which is um, that way that we improve ourselves to make us happier with who we are personally. Okay, so inner work, inner work, inner work, inner work. It has to do with the idea that some cycles from the past are... I think you're becoming aware that you've got some cycles from the past that you don't want to take with you into the future. And you're making the decision to cut those off. Now, this is just the beginning of that work. Just making that decision is the beginning of that work. But decisions are key because once we decide something, other options fall away that could lead us down alternate paths. So now we're more focused on what direction we are actually going. So it's awesome to see that you've recognized that there's a cycle you don't want to take forward. You're making a decision not to take it forward. It is, like I said, the beginning of the work. Now you have to figure out how do you not take it forward? What do you do instead? You know, that work is still there and you still have the work of making it happen when the rubber meets the road. But you've got some forward momentum going just at that decision point. So that's way cool. Way cool Capricorn. All right, next thing we're looking at is where are you growing in your personality during this time frame? Mm -hmm. What is going on here? There is something going on in your life where you have been given the go-ahead that, okay, we can take this forward. We can move forward with this. We can, we can do this thing. All right, and it's something that you feel very excited about, inspired. Um, it's something that just makes you feel good about doing it. You just really, you love this whole idea of this project. And what you're doing right now is you're putting that logic into place. You're thinking this through. Okay, we've got the go ahead. Okay, I know I like this project. I know I want to move forward with it. Now you're putting that thinking in. Okay. How am I going to handle this? What is this going to take? You know, how much money do I need to put together? What kind of resources do I need to have? All of that type of stuff. You're just strategizing. We see you really learning to strategize on implementing um, a plan that makes you feel inspired or happy. Maybe even more than one. Strategizing, you know, just using that strategy so that whenever you do this you have you know that you have a much better chance of it being successful than doing it fly by night which capricorn you're pretty organized anyway i don't see you doing too much fly by night this is just taking it to a whole new level whole new level all right next thing i'm looking at talks to me about those things that you stand for Capricorns, you guys are paying something off or making a payment on something that's significant. And that is allowing for things to start to move smoother for you. And you're doing this in preparation for something. There is something that you're preparing for by, I think you're trying to make this, you're trying to make things move more smoothly. And to do that, you knew you had to pay this thing off or make a good, sizable chunk of payment on it. And so, in doing that, you are you're definitely preparing. You've got you've got some big plans coming up. You're preparing for for something here. What are you preparing? Are you preparing to buy a house, real estate? Preparing to buy a car? Are you preparing to propose to somebody? What are you preparing for here? There's something big. I like it. Okay, and so somebody has asked you about this and you've had to defend this. This is something that you stand for. Something that you're proud of, I think, even. La -da 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 -da. How do other people see you right now? They think you have no plan. Oh no, I thought that card was upside down. I was really surprised. No, they see you as planning. Excuse me, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> I was so surprised I just blurted that right out. It was wrong. <laughs> no, they see you as somebody who makes preparations and who plans ahead that that's kind of your mojo. That's how you do things. Um, 
they also see you as somebody who keeps things interesting. Like you don't really get bored and you don't really, uh, you're not a boring person. You're an interesting person to them. And I think they also feel like knowing that you plan things so strategically is kind of a downer for them. <laughs> <laughs> whoever this person is, they're kind of bummed by that because here they think that you're just, you know, this really interesting, fascinating person. And now they're finding out that you actually make plans about things. And so for them, they have this paradigm in their mind that somebody who plans is boring <laughs> and you're breaking their paradigm. You're in the process of breaking their paradigm, but they're really disappointed that you're such a planner. They kind of thought you did things off the cuff and that that was part of what made you interesting. And they still see you as interesting. I think they're a little bit befuddled about how you can be a planner and still be an interesting person. Ha! Huh. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? Okay. Let's look next at the flex point during this time frame. And right now we're looking at the first through the eighth. So this is a week plus the first day of the month. Flex point is where things start to go a little bit of a different direction during the week for you. It's also kind of the key in this spread. It talks about where um, you're having a lesson or experience that takes you to the next level. But for purposes of these videos, I just call it a flex point. That's interesting. Oh, okay. So it kind of seems to me like you guys have come into a situation where you've been through a dark night of the soul and you have faced some of your biggest fears head on personally. And now you're coming back up to the surface. Now you're, you're, Almost like I get this imagery of you diving into really deep, dark, murky water. And now you're at the point where you're coming up and you're breaking the surface. You're coming back to the top. You're coming back to the top. You, you have done whatever needed to be completed down in the murk. Whatever part of your shadow self you had to face and you had to work with and you had to really turn it around and clean it up. You're ready to come up to the top now and you're breaking the you're breaking the surface. You're coming up, you're getting your air again. Mission complete. <laughs> um, and as you are, oh gosh, it just feels really good. It's almost like you have this whole new fresh perspective on things. Whole new, completely fresh. Maybe even a little naive perspective on things, but completely fresh and innocent perspective on things. It's like you went and you looked at the most dark, most murky, most yucky stuff that you could find. And you got some things cleaned up in spite of that dark, yuck, murk. And now you're just feeling refreshed and revived. And almost there's almost a sense of childlike perspective. Childlike and trusting perspective now. And what's going on is now that you've done that, you're taking off your mask. So let me explain. Um, we all wear a mask to a certain extent. And that mask is composed of whatever it is we think other people can accept about us. And so if there's something that we don't think a person can accept about us, then we don't show that in the mask. We cover that with the mask. All right. And then as we get more self-confidence, we use less and less mask and we show more of our real true self. Okay. And so this is telling me that you have faced, I think you have faced some things about yourself that you weren't so thrilled about. Maybe nobody else cared. Maybe people cared a lot, but you weren't so thrilled with them. And you've come to a point of acceptance and you've come to a point where you know that you can fix them if you want to. And maybe you're even taking steps to fix them. Either way, you can't fix them unless you know about them and you accept them. You've done at least that much. You've faced them. 
Okay, you've acknowledged them. Maybe you've done things to clean them up so far. And now that you've faced them and acknowledged them, you're ready to take off your mask. You're ready to quit hiding from the world those things that you don't think the world would think are so pretty. You're ready to let them see the real you. And that's what you're doing. You're removing that mask. You have faced those dark things about yourself and you've come up with this whole new childlike perspective and you're taking off your mask and you're just letting everybody see you. If you can accept you, why can't everybody else accept you? All right, so at the same time that this is going on, we have an ex showing up. Mm, maybe not an ex. Maybe we should say a person from the past. Okay? So Capricorns, you have somebody showing up from the past. This is not somebody you're particularly thrilled to see. <laughs> you don't really... The memories that you have of this person are memories where you just kind of go, Oh, I'm so glad I'm not in that situation anymore. Thank goodness. I'm actually hearing that song... Um, not your mama's broken heart is maybe the name of it or your mama's broken heart or mama's broken heart I don't know it's a female vocalist country song I think that uh, whenever you and this ex split up I think probably the ex split up with you and I think you didn't handle it very well at first okay I don't think you're still wishing you could have this ex back. I think you're looking at him and going, you know what, you were a jack. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And I really don't have time for you in my life. And so anyway, this person from the past has come back, made themselves known to you, and you are keeping them at arm's length. I don't see you blocking them out completely but I do see you saying, well, hang on. I'm just not so sure. Maybe you're saying to them, I'm just not so sure it's such a good idea right now. So you've kind of got them on hold, basically, because you really don't want to commit to this person at all in any way, shape, or form. That's what's showing up on the table. You've got somebody from the past on hold because you don't want to commit to them at all. And whatever happened in the past really had you upset, angry. And I think when you see them, I'm not sure you even want to talk to them because I think you're afraid that even talking to them, you might just blow up. You know, and just, l just lose control. And tell them exactly what you think. In a very ungraceful way that big sound that just started is my air conditioner for those of you who are wondering I know it sounds like there's a rocket ship about to take off it's just the air conditioner anyway let's look at what else is happening here at the same time that you've faced this murky stuff and you've unmasked your true self to the world. So exciting. That's major growth, by the way. Very exciting. So the other thing that's happening... Ooh. Ooh. Is this the person from the past? This is a different person that you're interacting with. I don't think they're just showing up. I think you're interacting with them. And you have been for a while. And I think this person sort of juggles you w around with other people. Or if this is a business partner, with other business partners. Or if this is, you know, whatever the situation is, first priority for this person, you're an option for this person. Now, it can be a romantic partner or a romantic interest. So you've got somebody here who is juggling and I think what you're doing here you're giving them a little piece of advice you're giving them a friendly piece of advice 
I will tell you also, I feel like this other person is somebody who has strong narcissistic tendencies. My narcissistic card is on the table in front of me here. So this is, uh, for those of you who don't know what narcissistic is, the fact that a narcissist, narcissistic person shows up in your reading, I would, I would suggest you find that out. <laughs> Google that, research that, whatever. So you know what you're dealing with here because this is, this is not an easy character to deal with. But in a nutshell, they come off charming and sweet and salt of the earth, good people. Uh, maybe even a pillar of the community. And the more you get to know them, the more you get into their inside world, their private personal world, the more you realize that they are not above doing just basically whatever it takes to get other people to do whatever they want. Everything from lying and manipulating to throwing fits like they're four years old, even though they might be 54. So that's somebody that you're, that you're interacting with, and this person is juggling you. So you're, he's, this person, he or she, is not treating you as the first priority. They are treating you as just one of the options. And I think you're giving this person a piece of your mind. You're definitely giving them some advice. I think you're doing it in a calm and graceful way. But I think they're getting the very clear picture that you're not thrilled with their behavior, shall we say. All right, so where do we see you at the end of this time frame? <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, you got three majors for the end of this time frame. You are taking some time alone. You're stepping back. Spending some time by yourself. You're really thinking some things over. Looking through some things. I think you're on a real major growth track as far as spiritually right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. With having already faced that murky stuff. Now you're looking at yourself even more in depth. You are really getting in touch with your intuition and your source of intuition as you're doing this. You're listening to your intuition as you move forward. And you have, um, I think it, it makes, I'm not, I'm not even going to say I think, this makes you really happy to do this. Some of you who are feeling a little bit shaky on your own intuition, by the way, Capricorns, I feel like you are getting a reading. For those of you who are considering a reading, pick me, pick me, pick me. I would love to read for you. Um, seriously, I would be thrilled to read for you. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think you're, you're very happy with this time of just isolation and with this time of really getting in touch with intuitive nudges. So that's where we're going to end. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's where we're going to end that time frame. I think that's a pretty cool. That's a pretty cool little holding point till we get into the next time frame. I'm going to take a break right now, and then whenever I come back, we will look at uh, the. Hello there again, Capricorns. We are going to look now at August 9th through the 15th. I have to say I'm really excited about your last time frame. Lots of spiritual growth. Looks like it was happening there personal growth. That's always a good thing. Positive results always come out of things like that, even if they're hard to go through at the moment. The results are always worth it. So let's see. Shuffling for 9th through the 15th now for my wonderful Capricorns. La da 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 La da 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 La da 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 La da 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 La da 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 All right, all of our cards are down. Okay, let's see what we have coming up for you guys. 
First of all, starting off in the environment, which is any place where you have energy or effort invested. Usually it's home, but it could be someplace else. I do have that you're sharing your environment with somebody right now and that um, it seems to me like there is this idea of forgiveness or of letting go of old negative energy from the past that shows up in your environment as well. And I think that um, the person that you're sharing your environment with is somebody who's a little down. They have the blues. They have a problem that they're not quite sure how to solve. And this is really unusual for this person because they're known for being able to solve problems easily because they think outside the box. They don't let culture or society tell them what is normal and what's okay for them. Um, they're very sunshiny, optimistic people. They like other people normally. I feel like there's a little bit of being sort of closed into themselves going on right now. But even with that, I still think that you're ha you are sharing some good times in your environment. And I think that you're helping... I don't want to say that exactly, but I think that the two of you being around each other is sort of helping both of you to heal and move on from things in the past. All right, Capricorns. What's up next? I'm trying to think in my brain. I don't think I personally know a Capricorn right now. Not that I really interact with on an everyday basis. Alrighty, we're looking at your subconscious leanings now, those things that run in the background program of your mind. <laughs> I love it. So you guys have your boundaries up. And the reason your boundaries are up are because you have a very hopeful attitude about something. Maybe about a lot of things, but definitely about one thing at least. And you have decided that you are going to maintain that optimism and maintain that hopefulness. And so the boundaries have to do with naysayers or dream stealers. You're not really, you're not really interacting with them as much as you could because... You feel like it's not productive. It, they're stealing your dream. They're stealing your hope. And so subconsciously you are working on how do I, how do I spend less time? How do I put up boundaries between myself and those negative Nellies and naysayers and dream stealers? Really smart to be considering that. All right, next thing we're looking at talks to me about two different things. First of all, learning style. Secondly, communication style. We are going to look at learning style first. Uh, remember, I saw so much spiritual growth for you last time. Got some learning that's coming through interaction with the divine, interaction with spirit. You're finding out new information that way. You also have um, some learning and some new information coming to you that is very emotional. It causes a lot of emotions in you. So this could be stuff that you're just happy to find out, you know. Um, it can cause other emotions too, but I don't feel so much negative here. This feels like, you know, it's just stuff that you're excited to know and that is fascinating and, and cool for you to be understanding. Um, other thing about learning style, what else do we have here? My goodness, I need to replace this card. Some places on the picture are starting to wear away. Um, I think learning is just kind of coming in easy to you right now. You're picking up new information pretty easily. Easily and peacefully. I feel like like stopping right now and hearing a hippie song. <laughs> peacefully and easily. Okay, let's look at your communication style. Your communication, much like some of the things that you're learning, um, can be very emotional during this time frame. I think you are trying to put the most positive spin on things as you put it out there to other people, definitely. Although um, there is this sense, too, of setting realistic expectations. So you're not candy coating. You're not, 
you're not embellishing, you're being real, but you are kind of focusing on the better things about what's real right now when you're communicating. La da 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 da. Well, this is really off the wall, but some of you, some of you Capricorns during the week of the 9th to the 15th will be talking to somebody about the idea of aliens or UFOs. Possibly even Roswell. Some of you may even be visiting Roswell. Uh, but this is coming up as communication. <laughs> That's interesting. I can tell you guys I have never got that before and I've been doing these types of videos for a long time. General videos. Since 2013, I think. 2014 for sure. La da da da. I don't think I've even gotten that in a private reading before. Okay, anyway. <laughs> let's move on from the aliens and let's look at work. Work, work, work from the 9th to the 15th for Capricorn. I don't think you're feeling particularly inspired about your work and you may even be feeling like, well, it doesn't really do anything. How does it really benefit anybody? It's just part of the same old treadmill cycle. And you're finding yourself just low of energy, like you're just sort of having to drag yourself to do the work that you normally do. And I think that you're also... You're working on your own where normally there would be somebody else there helping you or with you. So you may be carrying the responsibilities of yourself and somebody else during this time as well, which may be part of why you're dragging and part of why you're feeling uninspired because you're just tired. Let's look at inner work. Inner work. Your inner work has a lot to do with your self-esteem and self-confidence that you're working on building that back up again. You have this idea that unless there's somebody else with you that you can't really do anything or you're not really worth anything. And I think you're really, your inner work is about facing that idea and realizing that you are perfectly more than adequate, more than adequate, more than adequate on your own. La da 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 Oops, sorry about that. Totally bumped the camera there. All right. Next thing that we're looking at is going to be that part of your personality, which is growing or expanding during this particular time frame. Are we a little impatient? Are we... There is definitely a sense of urgency that shows up here. It looks like you have taken some time to take a break, to think things over, and now you are just ready. You're ready to mash the gas forward. You really want to. You want to you wanna push that pedal to the floor moving forward. And you're really impatient about how quickly things are happening, or rather, how quickly they're not so much happening. And it does look like also there's some kind of big shakeup that has happened. And I think whenever this big shakeup happens, I think you've already, I think you've already kind of seen it coming. And I think it's when this shakeup happens that you're just like, okay, I've had enough thinking this over. I've got this figured out. Now it's time to take action. Bang. You're in motion. You're taking care of business. You're doing things. Things are not moving forward. Um, you're really impatient with people that you have to interact with to make things move forward because they are not, they don't have that same sense of urgency as you do about the situation. Where you're growing and expanding is in learning how to deal with people that are like that. Can you change your attitude? Can you have other people do what they're doing? Can you learn to be patient? <laughs> All right, Capricorns, let's look next at those things that you stand for. Are these two people the same? Okay. Is this applying to that person? Okay. All right. So here's what we've got going on, Capricorn. Remember that narcissistic person that I told you about last time? 
Yeah, still here. And this narcissistic person is throwing a fit and he's really angry. He or she. For most of you, it'll be a he. Uh, for some of you, it could be a really assertive female. Really angry. You know why they're really angry? Because you're not doing everything for them that you always did for them before. Because guess what? Remember you were working on your self-confidence and your self-esteem? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well that works helped out a little bit. And now you're coming into this situation where you have opportunities to move forward and you are taking those opportunities. But they are requiring you to put in some energy and effort, which means you have less energy and effort to pamper this other person. And they're mad about it. They are angry. They're throwing a fit about it, definitely. They're letting you know how they feel. How dare you make a healthy choice for you? Shame on you. <laughs> All right. Let's look next at how somebody is perceiving you. Yep, this is going to be that person that you don't have as much time to baby them anymore. You're a narcissistic person. So now that you're not babying them and giving them all the attention that you used to give them before, and now that they're angry, they're seeing you as... somebody that they thought was ideal before but now they're realizing Ooh, this person isn't really the ideal I don't get to walk all over them Capricorn Mr. and Ms. Capricorn quit letting me walk all over them they're not the ideal that's not what I want you had some time to yourself and when you came out of it oh you were a monster you were doing your own thing you were doing things that were healthy for you that's scary to them and it's interesting where they had you as and this is serious too but where they had you as the the queen or the king of their heart now they're taking you off of that throne baby oh no you're not giving them as much attention as they used to have well mm -mm. you can't be the primary focus of whatever it is that they call love all right so be prepared. As you're making these healthy decisions for yourself, it's going to really tick off your narcissistic type person. It's going to cause some backlash. Now I'm not saying that to say don't make healthy choices for yourself. What I'm saying is be prepared. Be prepared. The wrath of the spoiled one is coming. All right. Let's look next at your flex point. Flex point for this week. <laughs> okay. Is this the same person we were just talking about? All right. So. This narcissistic person that's not too happy because you're making some healthy decisions for yourself. We see them in your flex point too. Okay. So they are trying to argue with you. Trying to pick fights with you. They're being completely dishonest with you. They are trying to manipulate you in any way they can to get you back on their team as far as they're concerned. Here's what I think is kind of hysterical about it. You're so over it. You're bored. You're bored. Whoever you are, Capricorns, that this is relating to, apparently you've been with this narcissist for a while, or you've dealt with a narcissist for a while, because you're like, yeah, seen that act. Seen that dog and pony show too. Yep, what else you got? Yep, not being manipulated by that either. The whole thing is, you are not being sucked in. As hard as they are trying to get you sucked in emotionally. They're trying to emotionally guilt trip you. They're trying to logic you. They're trying to manipulate you. Everything they're trying. Mm-mm. Not having it. And you're not being dramatic about it. 
they kind of want you to because then that makes you look bad, but you're not. You're not being dramatic about it. You've been with this guy for a while, this guy or this lady. <laughs> you know their trips. All right. What else is going on at the same time that this person is really trying to suck you in hard? La da 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 da. It is actually having a little bit of an impact on you. It's almost to me like the harder this person tries to stir things up with you, the more you know everything is okay with this person. Like in your mind, well, look how hard this person's trying to get me to react. It's almost like as long as you've got this person's attention, even if it's really negative, hard to deal with attention, that's a feather in your cap is basically how this is coming up. You're, I think you're happy to have their attention. It's interesting. It's really interesting. I think you're happy to have their attention, even though it's kind of, it's really negative. What else is happening? <laughs> you're just following your heart. You're going on your merry way. You're doing whatever you want to do right here. And you're not trying to juggle their needs with your needs anymore. You're really just focusing on you. And you're really enjoying this time. And it's a very productive time, too, for you. Not only are you enjoying it, but you're also accomplishing a lot. <laughs> Look at what all this self-growth self did for you. This is fantastic. All right. How do we see you at the end of this week? We see you. This person is still just trying to suck you in, trying to suck you in, trying to suck you in. Trying to get you to engage. Trying to get you to do all the things you used to do for them. Again. And we see you don't necessarily putting up boundaries so much, but you're at a point now where you're not showing this person the real you anymore. It's almost like they've worn you down that much. Like you've, before, during the last time frame, we saw you take that mask off and show the world the real you who had faced your shadow side. Now you're at a point where you're putting that mask back on, at least partially for this person, because they can't handle the real you. They can't handle it when you make healthy choices. So there's, to me, there's, there's a lot of, mm-hmm, yep, you're right, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're right. And as soon as they walk out the door, you do whatever it is that you need to do. <laughs> That's what I see happening here with this mask coming down. All right. And I think you are very, very committed to the idea of not getting sucked back into doing everything for this person. So you're you're putting the mask on a little bit, but it's just partly a matter of kind of defense. It's like, okay, I'll compromise this much. I'll put the mask on this far for you. But in all reality, I'm still going to take care of me, and you're still going to have to start taking care of you in the ways that I used to. Okay, so that's where we see you at the end of that time frame, Capricorn. Let me go ahead and wrap this up. I'll take a quick break, and then I'll come back, and we'll look at the next section of the month. Thank you. Okay, Capricorns, we are back. This time we're looking at August 16th through the 22nd. We're going to see what comes up for you here. So far, it seems like we're having a pretty good month. You're already seeing some of the results of some spiritual growth that came up in the first segment. Once again, there's my air conditioner launching off alrighty Capricorn here we go
Okay, let's see what we have. We're going to start with the environment once again. What's going on here? Hmm. Things aren't going very well in the environment right now, and you're not feeling very satisfied with it. You have been sort of holding back on taking any action, and now you are springing into motion sometime August 16th through the 22nd. You're springing into motion because you're tired of not being satisfied or things not working well in the environment. You're ready to start making some improvements with that. La da da da. Next, we're looking at your subconscious leanings. What do we have? What do we have? So it looks like we had a situation the last time frame, I think it was, where somebody had you just as an option, or maybe it was the first time frame. We're seeing something come up here in your subconscious leanings where you are really working around this idea of some kind of partnership, whether it's romantic business partnership or whatever, where somebody considers you an option and not a priority. And you're really coming to the point where you're thinking, you know what, I'm not putting energy or effort into this as long as I'm just an option. Something's going to have to change for me to continue to put energy and effort into this. And so your subconscious is just gnawing on making that change. It's really thinking about, okay, let's make that change. How do we make that change? When do we make that change? La -da -da -da. Next we're looking at communication style and learning style. Starting with learning style first. Once again, we do have a lot of spiritual learning that is coming in. So this could be communicating with the divine, meditation. You could actually be learning about spiritual things. Um, you are very sharp. Once again, you're showing up as being very sharp, very agile minded. So new information. You have a lot of new information that's coming into you, but I think you're also frustrated because there is information that you're trying to find out that all you can get is just hazy or vague answers so far. And I do see that as being something that is frustrating you and it just makes you want to dig deeper to try to find the truth. And I do see you paying attention to information that you're getting in about money or material goods right now as well. Pretty well balanced there. Spiritual, money, and material goods. All right. Communication style. I think that you may be communicating in a pretty hazy or vague way right now. Um, you may not be wanting to communicate your exact plans or exactly what's in your mind at the moment. You may be trying to be polite, but you also may have some things on your mind that you're just really not ready to share yet. There is a little bit of rough communication going on too. And I do think that you're getting kind of sucked into this, like you're coming down to this other person's level as well. And so when I say there's rough communication, I mean there's like, um, like in football they would say it's unnecessary roughness. You're saying things that are meaner than necessary to get a point across. And I think that somebody is doing that with you too. I don't think that it's a one-way street here. But I do feel like up until this point, you've been staying kind of above that. Well, now I think you've gotten a little worn down. You're a little tired and you're just a little tired of hearing the baloney. Now you're giving the other person a taste of their medicine. I really do feel like this is mostly just with one, with one person, but there's a lot of this going on. So this is probably with one person that you spend a significant amount of time interacting with or communicating with. And then the other thing that I see going on as far as your communication is there is some kind of idea about how to make things better, probably financially, but maybe also emotionally. We've got green. We've got the heart chakra here. Um, but there's a lot of communication about how to make things better. I really don't feel like this is the communication with the person that you're having the rough communication with. I feel like this has more to do with somebody else and possibly even a business situation rather than a more personal situation. And I also feel like there's probably multiple people that you're talking to about something like that as well. 
Okay, what else is going on? Let's look next at your work, August 16th to the 22nd. What do we have going on here? You're being really straight up with somebody when it comes to work about the idea that you're feeling a little bit trapped. It's like you can see the goal or the target that you're reaching for, but you just don't know how to get there. And I think you're letting somebody know that that's, that's where you're finding yourself in a particular situation at work. Um, and I think that this situation has to do with the idea that somebody has a negative opinion of you or a negative perspective of, perspective of you. They're judging you for something that um, I think for most of you is way old or in the past and they're sort of still holding that judgment against you and it's making it really hard for you to actually be able to accomplish your goals in the job because of this person's attitude towards you and I think you are sharing that with somebody else you're just being straight up you're not even trying to hide it you're not trying to be polite you're not trying to cover for this other person you know you're just you're just out there with it look this is this is the honest truth about what's going on here now Ba -da -da -da. Let's look at inner work. It really looks to me like on your inner work, you're doing a lot of beating up on yourself right now. You're telling yourself how unworthy you are, how terrible art you are, how you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that, what's wrong with you. A lot of those types of thoughts are happening right now. And then you're wondering, how come you can't find your happiness? Let's think about that, Capricorn. How come you can't find your happiness? If you're talking so negative to yourself, you not being able to find your happiness isn't even... We can't even blame that on somebody else saying some nasty stuff about you. That's you. Stop it. Stop it. Learn to appreciate yourself. Your inner work really needs to be here. Because I would swing this if I was you, because we have free will and free will can change things. If I got a reading that said this, I would be swinging it. And I would be really focused on finding the positive things about myself during this week to offset any, th any tendencies that might be coming up for me to bash myself. And that's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to start looking for positive things about yourself so you can shore yourself up coming into this week so that you feel stronger before you start. And so that you can remember as you're going through this week, hey... Why am I beating myself up like this? You know? So, that's that. Plus the admissed advice, which, you know, may or may not be worth anything to you, but it made me feel good to say it. <laughs> All right. Next, we're going to look at that part of your personality, which is being grown or expanded right now. You're really definitely embroiled in a fight or debate with somebody about your own happiness. This isn't even inner conflict here. There is somebody around you that your happiness is too expensive to them. Because if you do what it takes to make you happy, then they feel like they suffer because you're not babying them and, and taking care of things that are their responsibility to take care of to start with. And this person has given you an all-out fight over the fact that you're happy. I mean, if this is a romantic interest... Let's say even let's say it's a romantic partner because this is the example that comes to the top of my head. Let's say that this is a romantic partner. Let's say that you guys have been cohabiting for a long time. Let's say that normally you lay out this person's clothes the day before. Let's say that now you're taking a class because you want to improve yourself and you don't have time to lay out that person's clothes anymore. They're having a they're fighting with you about that. Well, you must not love me anymore because you don't lay out my clothes anymore. Um, do you know where the closet is? Oh, do you have a general idea about how colors work together? Do you think you could kind of sort of figure that out? Do we need to buy granimals for you? You know, I mean, this person is just giving you such a hard time because 
you are doing something that makes you feel happy and productive and helps you move forward in life and they're just feeling totally neglected because you're not doing all those little things that are their responsibility to begin with. I mean, yeah, it was nice that you did them, but now you don't have time. They should have appreciated them at the time and they should understand now. They should be supporting you now. They should be supportive of you. They're not. They're pitching a fit. They're pitching a fit because you are actually following your happiness. You're doing something that makes you happy and they can't handle it. Not that they don't want you to be happy. They're fine with you being happy. They just don't want you to quit spoiling them. And where you're expanding and growing is in learning how to deal with this situation. All right, let's look next at things that you stand for. La da da da, what do we have happening here? Ho 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 ho, you gave this person the silent treatment. Temporarily, you gave this person the silent treatment. You had enough. You weren't getting drawn in. We saw you weren't getting drawn into their drama. I don't know if that was this period or last period. Part of not getting into their drama looks like your strategy was, you know what, I'm just not talking to you. Doesn't make sense for me to talk to you. And then you let down your boundary and you started talking to them again. And I think they're coming at you. Why did you do that? I just don't understand why you would do that. You know, there's a lot I could be saying here, right? I'm trying to be nice to your other person. Okay, how the other person perceives you. They do see you as starting something new, something that you don't know where it's going to take you, something that is a leap of faith. And it looks to me like this is something that is actually going to be bringing in more material goods, more resources to you, more wealth to you. But they feel like you're doing that as a way of being rebellious, as a way of throwing a fit. So like in the last example, if you signed up for a class, they're feeling like you're just doing this out of rebellion. You're just doing this to throw a fit because you're not happy with them or whatever. So yeah, they see that you're starting something new and that it's going to benefit you financially. Absolutely. Um, but they feel like you're doing it as an act of rebellion, out of an act of anger, out of, a, out of an act of like, this is your version of sulking is what they think. you got a mess to deal with here, Capricorn. <laughs> That's all I can say. This is a mess. This is a mess. All right. And this takes a lot of energy to deal with something like this, too. Okay, Capricorns. Flex point or pivot point. Lesson or experience of this week. There is something that you're doing that is unexpected or unplanned. And I feel like this has to do with there's some kind of goal or target that um, you were trying to reach along with somebody else in your life. And you just decided, no, nope, I'm not working on that. I'm not doing my part on that. I'm not. And instead what you're doing is you're moving away from the drama, you're moving forward, you're moving into more peaceful, more calm waters. So you're leaving something negative behind. So whatever this was, this goal or this target that you were moving to with somebody else, you're realizing that that was having a negative influence on you. And you needed to get away from it. And I don't think you planned this. I think that this just comes up. It just comes over you in an instant. What am I doing? I need to stop. And you stop. All right, Capricorns, what else is going on at the same time that this is happening? Mm 
you are definitely dealing with some disappointment. And I think this disappointment has to do with this person who's throwing a fit because you're trying to do something that is good for you and helpful to you. This is disappointing to you that they can't be happy for you. And it's disappointing to you that they can't be on the same page as you and that they can't be supportive of you. And what's interesting here is even though you're going through disappointment, you're also healing up. So I really think a lot of you Capricorns have been interacting with somebody who's narcissistic or who has strong narcissistic tendencies for quite a while. And things have been really rough for quite a while because even in the midst of this disappointment, your heart is healing. It's almost, to me, this basically says that you've gotten to the point that you are so used to how this rolls out that the disappointment of this last time is somehow starting to heal you. It's like you're having this realization of this is just the way this person is. There are no hoops that I can jump through that fix this. There's nothing that I can do that make this person think better of me or make this person appreciate me more. There is nothing I can do to change how this person views me. And so even though you're disappointed in their lack of support, you're also feeling better in your own heart in that you're coming to this understanding of it's not about me. It's not about me, the Capricorn. It's all about them. I'm not the one that is so dastardly terrible that I can never do anything right. I do a lot of things right. All of this aggravation and anger and fighting, it's not about me. I didn't actually cause this. Like in a normal situation, somebody would be happy for me. So that's where that healing is coming in and that understanding that it really isn't personal. It's not about you. It's about, it's about this other person and their own insecurities. That's making them act out the way they're acting out. And that's the truth of it. Narcissist or not. Now, what else is going on here? La da 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 da. Yeah, so even though you're disappointed, the next thing that we see is that you are forgiving this person. You're forgiving this person. You've always forgiven this person. Why would anything change now? Seriously. And I think that you are moving forward. But you're moving forward steadily, working on something that is kind of your baby, something that makes you happy. This is one of your projects that you're moving forward. You're forgiving this person, but I don't see you involving this person in this project or in the idea that you're moving forward. So I think you're still moving forward financially. And you're forgiving this person for their insecurities and how they behave towards you. Look at this. Isn't this interesting? I have a card about you missing somebody, but we never saw a breakup. Mm -mm. There never was really a breakup. There's fighting and there's bickering. I think you're missing this person. I think you're missing how you guys used to laugh and joke around and have fun together back when you used to, you know, do everything they wanted you to do. You miss that person. But you also really don't have any ideas about how to get back to where you used to be with this person because you've changed. You've changed in some very healthy ways. And because you've made some changes in some very healthy ways, this person hasn't stayed up with those changes. They haven't been growing. They haven't been becoming more healthy. They're still stuck in their same infantile state. And so I think you're sort of you're sort of out of ideas about what to do moving forward. You're out of ideas about how to get reconnected with this person. You just don't know what it would take to even do that. Even though there hasn't been an official breakup. It's like things have just eroded. Okay, 
So that's where we see you at the end of this week. Let me go ahead and take a break. I'll come back. We'll finish out the month. Thank you guys for being here. I'll see you soon. Hello there, Capricorn. Thank you so much for being here. We are back again with the very last portion of your month. And this is going to be a nine-day segment. We're looking at the 23rd through the 31st this time. Just seeing what we can see. See what we can see. What do you need a heads up about? What can you start planning for now? What kind of good things are coming in that you want to be ready for? Let's see what comes up. Capricorns, August 23rd to the 31st. All right, cards are on the table. Let's start with your environment, anywhere where you have energy or effort invested. <sighs> I just have this sigh of relief like come over me as I'm looking at these cards. It looks to me like um, you're feeling pretty independent in your environment. You're getting your balance in your environment and you're just feeling satisfied with this. This is just all really, really positive energies that are coming up. Just this whole satisfaction, this finding your balance. For me, that's like, you know, finding your mojo. When we get our balance, we get our mojo back. You know, and just feeling like, you know, you've, you've got things, you've got this, you've got things under control, and you're doing well in your environment. I love it. Yay! Oh, I like it when we start with a good environment like that. That's an indication that we've got some good stuff coming. Okay, so Capricorn's subconscious leanings. Okay, so Capricorn, you've got your walls up. <laughs> you're on defense mode. You're really thinking in your subconscious mind about, mm, things are quiet and peaceful and calm right now, but I bet you they're fixing to get interesting. And you are planning on how you're going to keep some kind of toxic situation away. How you're going to keep it at bay. How you're not going to allow it to impact or to affect your life. So that's what's on your subconscious mind. We're looking next at learning style and communication style. We are going to start with learning style first. Learning style. You may be getting an astrology reading coming up during this time frame. La da 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 Yeah, we don't have a fuller new moon there. I think you may be getting an astrology reading. That would make a lot of sense with that card. La da 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 What is this? I think there are some things actually I know we're looking at learning style, but this is coming to me right now, so I'm going to share it while I'm thinking about it. There are some things that you are working on keeping other people from learning. <laughs> you're kind of keeping those things segregated in your life, and you're not being very open or outgoing about um, some of those things that are happening or that you have planned in your life. So there are some secrets that you're keeping. You have an astrology reading coming in. I think that there's not a whole lot of new information coming in other than other than that. Everything else is coming in as kind of hazy or vague information, not anything really specific. Alrighty. La da 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 Next thing we're looking at is communication style. I do think that your communication during this time frame is very well grounded, which just means you're very aware of the things that you're talking about. You're also very aware of the people that you're talking to and why you're saying what you're saying to them. So you're not doing anything that's insensitive. Um, you are making sure everybody knows what they need to know, that type of thing. 
Now, there is somebody around you that um, I think you're talking very sweetly to. Um, you may even be composing poetry right now. La da 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 da. What else do we have here? I think there's somebody that you're having. Here's how I'm going to say it. And you guys can see how this shows up in your life. But I think you're having a flurry of interactions with this person that are not fully understandable. That's interesting. The example that comes to mind is really interacting a lot with a baby who doesn't know language yet. You can talk to them. You can communicate with them. They might be able to get some things across to you. But for the most part, un, unintelligible, that's what I'm looking for. For the most part, unintelligible reactions here. And I feel like that's what's going on with you and somebody else. There's You're having several interactions with this person during this time frame. And the interactions are kind of unintelligible. Maybe you have somebody drunk calling you. <laughs> Don't we love the drunk calls? No. All right. looking at work next what are we looking at there's some good news here about money now when good news about money shows up that doesn't necessarily mean we have the money in our hand although we could it doesn't take it off the table I just want to be very clear that just because you have good news about money doesn't necessarily mean the money's in your bank account yet okay but you do have good news coming in about money around work so maybe you're going to hear about how much your bonus is going to be or that you're going to get a bonus or something like that some kind of good news about money it does feel like there's a lot of strategy going into the work that you're doing right now and i think you're also questioning yourself on the work that you're doing and i'm talking about how you make a living i think you're questioning you're questioning the idea of is this work that you do something that you want other people, especially if you have kids, but is this work that you do something that you want other people to use an as an example to pattern their life after? Do you want, do you feel like the work that you do has the type of integrity that it could be useful in leaving a legacy? For some of you, it maybe doesn't pay enough that you can leave a legacy. But for others of you, I feel like for most of you Capricorns, um, the idea of legacy, of how you impact that sphere of influence that you have in a way that they're going to remember you after you're gone, that's what you're really considering. And you're looking at, how are people going to remember me? If I do this type of work, how are people going to remember me after I'm gone? Are they going to remember me the way I want them to? And I think that whenever you're probing into that, I don't think you're liking the, the answers that you're coming up with. It's when we find those things that we don't like that we can make changes. You know that, right? It's not the end of the story. It's usually just the beginning. Okay, let's look at that part of your personality, which is being grown or expanded now. You are seeing that you have options now. I think you felt like you were really restricted and like you didn't have options before. And now you're seeing that, you know, the world is your oyster. There's a lot of options out there. There's a lot of different things that you can do. And I think that you're realizing that There is, not only are there a lot of options for you, 
one of the options that keeps trying to put themselves in front of you and keeps trying to say, pick me, pick me, pick me, you're realizing that that option only is, is good as long as things are new. As soon as the new wears off and things get into a routine and you have a mojo, then that person is gone because they're all about the conquest. They're all about that challenge of, of doing something new, playing with something new. And so it looks to me like you're making a decision about this particular option that keeps trying to show up and keeps trying to put themselves in your lives. That you're deciding, you know what, I've got too many options to waste time on this where I know how it's going to end. I have too many options to waste time on this. This is a dead end deal. Can't waste my time on that. There's too many other options out there for me to be exploring right now. <clears throat> Not that you're exploring a bunch of options simultaneously. Anyway, let's not get sidetracked. Bum, 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 bum. <clears throat> what do you stand for? Somebody is talking to you about the idea that <clears throat> I think somebody has told you they no longer wanted to be committed to or in contract with you or whatever the situation was. And then they came back later and they said, oh, I made a mistake. I do want to be in a commitment with you. I do want to have a contract with you. Whatever your situation is, whether it's romantic, professional, friendship, whatever. And I think you're the one that said, mm, I'm kind of done with this. This time around, you're the one that said that. And that made this other person really unhappy. And I think that somebody's saying something to you and you're having to defend the idea that, you know what, yeah, I did think, you know, that that was ideal at one point in my life. But, you know, we went our own ways and I just found out that that's not, ideal. There are things that are more ideal. La -da 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 -da. Okay. How that other person perceives you. They see you as somebody who's happy, somebody who's following your happiness. That you're just kind of chilling. And that you're at peace. They see you at peace, and they see you really expanding your spiritual life right now. That chilling is about meditation, about spending time really talking with the divine and working on your own inner self. They see you, that you're happy and that you're at peace. La -da 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 -da. Next, we're going to look at the flex point during this time frame or the lesson, or the experience, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. So you've got your self-confidence back. You've got your self-esteem back. This is fantastic. You have forgiven this other person. You've put that in the past. You're letting that go. You're not holding on to any kind of negative energy from that. And you're collaborating with somebody. You're feeling really good. You're feeling really good. And you're feeling good enough to go out and collaborate with somebody in the world. You're not feeling like you have to carry all the weight all by yourself anymore. Collaboration could be personal in your personal life, but it also could be a professional thing too. It's going to apply in different ways to different ones of you. La -da 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 -da. What else is going on? Okay, <laughs> Capricorn, some of you may be offended by this. If you are, I'm just going to apologize ahead of time, but this is a message that is coming through, and I'm going to say it as discreetly as I can, but it is definitely an adult message. I think that you guys are having a hot, steamy affair with lots and lots of hot steaminess. 
And I think it's an affair because I think you know going into it that this is not actually the partner that you want. This is not your ideal. This is just having some fun. Okay. So at the same time that your self-esteem is up, you're collaborating with other people, you're forgiving the last person, you're having some hot steamy fun with somebody who's temporary. And what else is happening? <clears throat> You've got a lot on your plate right now. There's a lot on your schedule. There's a lot on your schedule because you're still taking um, you're still taking other ideas and other projects that you're very excited about and you're still moving forward with those. You're not dropping those just because you've got this hot steaminess over here. You are still taking work very seriously and so you've got a lot of stuff on your plate and you're continuing forward with all that stuff and it's making you happy. It's making you happy to be busy. I don't see anything about being overwhelmed, overworked, none of that. Mm -mm. You're happy in this situation. So how do we see you end the month? Let's find out. Oh, look at that. You're taking your mask back off. You're letting the whole world see the real you again. And you have your mojo back. You're back to being independent. You're back to being creative. You're back to being totally self-supportive and happy and outgoing and positive. Yes, you're disappointed. There is some disappointment here. But this isn't like full-on grief. This is just disappointment. But for the most part, for the most part, you're feeling really good and you're getting your mojo back. I like it. I like it. What a great way to end the month. Ooh, ooh, good for you, Capricorns. Okay, so that was your month. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for all the thumbs ups on this video if you found that you relate to it or maybe. <laughs> it might be too early to tell. Um, thank you also for sharing this video with someone else that you think it might be helpful to. Thank you to my subscribers that keep coming back in spite of me <laughs> and my new subscribers. Thank you, thank you. And of course, last but not least, thank you so much to all of you who are still booking private readings with me and booking Reiki sessions with me. It is because of all of you guys' support at every single level that I am able to do what I love to do for my living. And so from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. Everyone have a fantastic month. I'll either see you in a private, either a Reiki session or a reading, or I'll see you back on the next video. Peace out.